Zodiac Zone. I'm Melissa Markham. I'm an evolutionary vibrational astrologer. And my goal is to help people find their life path. I always tell my clients, I'm just confirming what you already know about yourself. That's all I do. I'm a seasoned astrologer. I've been stud studying astrology for about most of my life, but became a professional astrologer about three and a half years ago. So I want to give my audience 30 minutes of an astrology fix every week from 9.30 to 10 p.m. Eastern. So the first part of my show, I really talk about some of the astrological things going on in the sky this week. And then the second half of my show, I like to do a little bit of readings. And so definitely, um, if you're into that, perfect show for you. So let's talk about this week. A um, couple interesting things are happening, in fact, today. And I was just looking at my notes. Um, Mercury enters Taurus today. So people are like, well, what does that mean? Mercury enters Taurus. Well, Taurus is a sign of money. It's a sign of self-worth. And really what this means right now is you should be thinking of how to focus on your goals. What are your goals? What are you trying to manifest? What are your desires? What are the things that you want to accomplish this year? Um, and really, this is a great time to start thinking about this with Mercury. Mercury is third house. It means mind. So these are some top of the mind things that you can be doing right now. Um, another thing is looking at our commitments. What are our commitments? What are we committed to do? Um, and again, these are just some little tidbits that I like to present to people and say, hey, this is how to work with the sky and to use it as a tool. Because what I believe is with astrology is our chart is our blueprint and we can use it to help us and to work on the things that, um, you know, we want to work on. So another thing I wanted to talk about that's going on for this week, and I'm just, um, I'm pulling it up here, um, is Black Moon Lilith. Now, Black Moon Lilith is, it's very interesting, and it's a very interesting part of our chart. And right now, it's sextiling Venus until uh, May 24th. So what does that mean? What is Black Moon Lilith, and what does it mean it's sextiling Venus? And I think it's about being um, very descriptive with what we want and what our needs are and our romantic partners. And I also think it's a part of the chart that you're kind of, it's the shadow side of yourself. So the story of Black Moon Lilith is very interesting. In Judeo mythology, um, Lilith was an equal partner to Adam and um, she wanted to be his equal. And the gods, or the powers that be, however we think of all of this stuff, did not want that. They wanted the woman to be submissive to the man. And so, basically, Black Moon Lilith, she was shunned. She was kicked out of the Garden of Eden. And more or less, I think, sexualized and made to look that you know, she was a dark entity, which I don't believe is true. I believe that Black Moon Lilith is our shadow side and the shadow side of what we're trying to um, overcome. And a lot of times when I present it in the chart to people, people are like, I didn't really think about it like that. For example, I had a client tonight and she had a she had Black Moon Lilith and Aquarius in the eighth house. And I told her, you know, eighth house is um, it's a house of, house of shared resources. And by the way, the houses can mean, you know, 20, 30, 40 different things, but they have quote unquote the main things that most astrologers look at. 
but um, for this, she, it, this I said, I think that when I'm reading your chart is about you being sexually free with no rules, you know, because her, the Black Moon Lilith was in Aquarius, and Aquarius is a very um, rule breaking sign, I would say, and it's about freedom and doing it your way. So I would say that that's, you know, and, and it, she really, really related to that. She was like, um, wow, I never thought of it that way. And that, that makes a lot of sense to me. So I, I told her, I said, you know, maybe some tantric practices. And what I mean by that is mixing sexuality with spirituality, you know, where you go down eighth house is, is Scorpio. It's ruled by Scorpio, so it's very deep. It's 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 a deep sign that wants more of a spiritual connection with a partner than just, okay, we're married, we share bills, we share this, we share that. It it really is on a very, very deep, intimate level. So I think it's a very important part of the chart. And I think that um I want to present Black Moon Lilith as um, a very positive aspect where we can all, doesn't matter, man, woman, we can all overcome our shadow side and really lean into it. For example, another example, I have Black Moon Lilith in Gemini in the 11th house of other people. And what I realized is I'm really scared to talk in front of groups. I was always very nervous to speak up, speak my mind, you know, say what I mean, mean what I say. And I really leaned into that. I really looked at that. And what I realized, I mean, obviously I'm doing the show, so I'm speaking in front of many people, but also what I've realized is that it's very empowering. I feel like I'm stepping into my power when I do these things. And that's what I want to provide to all my clients is, hey, use the chart as a tool. And this chart is a guide. Wherever the planets align um, and whatever signs that they're in is the things in, that you came here to work on, that your soul came here to work on. So I feel, again, very honored to be an astrologer and honored to have people share their experiences with me. So I just wanted to present that. And this is a time, like I said, in May, this is a time that, you know, this Black Moon Lilith is sextiling Venus. So it's a time to really say what you want in a relationship. You know, speak up. If you're if you're feeling like oh my gosh, I'm I'm not I'm not feeling secure in this, or I'm feeling that this person's being very controlling, or this is not what I want, then listen to that intuition inside because I feel like our higher self always guides us in a very positive and profound way. So I just wanted to. Um, Wanted to kind of share all of that with you all tonight. And, you know, now I'd like to do some readings. And I'm also going to look at where Black Moon Lilith is. I'm going to do my typical reading where I look at somebody's chart. I look at the lunar nodes. I have an idea, you know, what their life purpose is, but I want to also like kind of play with this tonight and look at since we're in this black moon Lilith, you know, what does this all look like? So, um, I, oh, see, it looks like black moon Lilith now. Hannah's on hold. Okay. Hi, Hannah. Hey, how are you? How are you? Did you resonate with what I said about Black Moon Lilith? Are you familiar with Black Moon Lilith? Oops, I'm having trouble hearing you. Ma'am? 
Yeah, now I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Um, what is your birthday? Five twenty-five eighty-eight. I'm sorry. Can you say that again? May twenty-fifth eight. I'm having trouble hearing you. I'm sorry. Okay. Hmm. I don't know. It sounds muffled to me. Can you hear me now? Now I can hear you. Okay. It's just not sitting on the where I'm like, you know, the trees and all that. I don't have to move. Oh yeah, no, I understand. I just it sounds a little muffled, so I was just trying to figure out like the birthday day month year. Um May twenty fifth, eighty eight. May twentieth, nineteen eighty eight? No, May twenty fifth, nineteen eighty eight. May twenty fifth, nineteen eighty eight. Okay. Got mm -hmm. it. The the time you were born? May Ma'am? Do you know your birth time? Um, no, ma'am. I think it was like 6.34 p.m. Six, we can try this. Um, yeah. I believe so, that's it. 6.34 or 6.36. 6.34, 36 p.m. or a.m.? P.m. P.m. And city and state? Pearl, Mississippi. What's the name of that city? Pearl, Mississippi. Pearl. Thank you. E A R L. Mississippi. Yes, ma'am. All right. Okay. All righty. Pearl, Mississippi. Okay. Let me go ahead and put this. Okay. I'm just taking my, I'm looking at this. All right. I wanted to look at where um, also Black Moon Lilith is um, and where Chiron is. Okay. A couple things I see. Um, like I said, I'm a vibrational evolutionary astrologer. So I really look at the lunar nodes, where, which are elliptical points in the sky. And it looks to me, I'm going to say what it is in astrology, and then I'm going to I'm going to tell you what it means. Your south node is in Virgo in the eleventh house. The eleventh house is other people, hopes and dreams, um, and your north node is in the fifth house, which is house of love, house of leisure. Um, so. What I see is, I believe that you're the type of person, first of all, you're a worry wart. You worry about everything. And right. I feel like because it's in, it's in the house of other people, it's always, it's not that you purposely try to keep up with the Joneses, but I feel like you care too much what people think, you know? Um, and yeah. a lot of times in, in this, with this placement, everything could be like a goal or it's just constant anxiety and stress and, oh my gosh, right. what, yeah. am, what am I going to do? And I'm not good enough. It's a lot of self-deprecation where you don't feel good about yeah. yourself. So really, okay. you know, that saying, let that shit go. I would have yeah. that, I would have that in your room somewhere where you can see it every day because that really describes the energy that you came here to, what you came here to accomplish and do, you know, mm -hmm. and know that you also came here to find your heart, to do what you love. And I feel like it's something spiritual because it's in Pisces. So it's, it's, it's helping others. It's, it could be helping, you know, a marginalized population, people that are disenfranchised. It could be getting way deep into the woo woo spiritual stuff where you're, um, really tapping into that, that higher consciousness, you know, but it's, it really has to be about something that you love, that you feel drawn to do. Does that resonate yeah. with you? 
It does. Everything you just said. Yeah, I mean, that's where you're going to be at your highest vibration, and that's where you're going to feel the best about yourself. Um, mm -hmm. It's interesting because you have Lilith, what I talked about tonight, the Black Moon Lilith. You have it in Leo, and you have it in the 10th house. So the shadow side of you, I feel like, wants to be seen, you know, where you might hide. Mm -hmm. You want to be seen, yep. Yep. but it has to be seen in a way in something that you really feel like you're feeling that you feel really drawn to and that you love, you know, yeah. and, and there you're going to make all the difference in the world to yourself because you're going to be like, wow, I really, this is, this is something I love and I want to show it to the world, you know, and if you yep. do that, you will have a reputation for it you will have a reputation for it. I mean, I know I know it's hard because sometimes um, you have Chiron and Gemini. Um, it's hard for you to speak up. It's hard for you to trust because it's, it's in the eighth house and the eighth house is about shared resources. It's um, house of psychic abilities, house of sex um house of it could be house of death but house of death doesn't actually mean a physical death it could mean a spiritual death and it, it, in terms it could mean transformation so it, you really came here to overcome your fear of speaking up and to transform and to go down deep with yourself you know and not be afraid not be afraid and learn to trust and love and learn to be connected, I feel like, to a partner, you know, where you're sharing resources and you're not feeling like, oh my gosh, this person is just invading on me or not, you know, or I'm not trusting, I'm not feeling trust and love because exactly. you, have, you have in your seventh house, you're the sun, so I feel like you feel, you shine in partnership. It's just feeling like you are connected and you have to be connected to a partner for you to feel that way. Otherwise it's just, it's, it, you know, it's not gonna work for you. Or it, if, it, if it has worked for you, you're not gonna feel it. You know, again, it's really, it's really about not keeping up with the Joneses and really being connected to a true partner. So that's what I have for you. Um, thank you so much for, for dialing it or for being part of this. Thank you so much. Okay, have a great night. Um, Doreen? Raina, sorry. Lorena. Raina. I don't know why I was Lorena, thinking L -O -R -E -N -A. Right. Okay. I must have read that wrong. It's been, you know, these, these nighttime shows, right? Sometimes you're seeing things that are not there. <laughs> yeah, um, that's fine. Lorena, what is your birthday? Day, month, and year? My birthday? Okay. Mm -hmm. It's September 1975. September what? 18. 1975. Okay. Um, 1975. What time were you born? Um, I believe it was like 9.52, something like that in the morning. 9.52 a.m. Okay. And city state? Dallas, Texas. Dallas, Texas. Dallas there's so many it's so many it's so interesting how many states have the same there's a Dallas Kansas okay um alrighty okay um so again I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna look at your nodes the elliptical points in the sky they are your life path 
you know, you came here, you come in in the south node, you you're trying to get to the north node. So it's interesting, your south node is in Taurus in the seventh house, and your north node is in Scorpio in the um, first house. So what that means with the south node in Taurus, it's all about financial security and feeling like, oh my gosh, um, the worst thing for a south node in Taurus is to tell them that they, that they're not financially secure. I mean, they they it's 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 almost like you have the double Venus complex too. And I know this energy well because I have the same energy. In I have a south node in Libra, in the second house of Taurus. Um, you tend to probably be a people pleaser especially when it comes to your closest relationships, especially partners, your go-alonger, you know, and, and really with the nodes natally being in Aries Libra, this is your year to really step into your power, you know, to transform. You came here to transform all that energy where you don't feel that you're, you have um, the financial aspect of who you are and also your self-worth. You have self-worth. You came here to transform and step into your power and do what you want to do. It's not about what a partner wants you to do or close family members want you to do. It's really about what what what's driven inside of you, you know, and this is a perfect, perfect year to do this. So whatever is calling to you this year, step into that and take advantage of that. Um, I would say Chiron and Aries in the in the sixth house. Um, have you had any type of health issue? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, nothing major. People, nothing major. Okay. Okay, sometimes people with Chiron in Chiron in the sixth house, they could have some sort of health issues. Sometimes they think things are there that aren't there. You know, um, it is some, you know, issues with health. Um, sometimes it could be hard for them to get on a routine that works for them. You know, there's there could be just something blocking them from that. Um, yeah. I would say it's, you have Jupiter there, Jupiter supports you. So, you know, um, use that Jupiter again, it's about really gaining, getting into your own power and, and feeling good about you and not needing validation from other people, not needing validation or emotional or security from other people. Um, okay. I would, I would say that. Pisces, um, you know, Pisces, I, I, I think you can find that spiritual person that you want to, that, you know, and, and get into your Pisces as far as your, um, your black moon Lilith in Pisces, you know, you can connect, you came here to really connect to source too, you know, you know, it's there. Maybe sometimes you dismiss it, you know, Oh, but it is, okay. it's going to provide you the things that, that you want. I mean, obviously you're, you're being called and drawn to these things because you're, you know, you're having a reading on a, on a psychic, on a, an astrology show. So I would just keep doing these things, you know, keep transforming, keep stepping into your power and don't be afraid to be who you are. Don't listen okay. to other people and, and be, you know, just keep doing you. you no, know, cause okay. this is a powerful year. I said for Aries and for, um, the North node in Aries, we all need to step into our power and we all need to just say, okay, people are going to think what they're going to think. And that's okay. I'm going to, I love me. It's that, that old thing. I love me. And I just want to be the best me that I can be for me. You know, it's not about everybody else. So I, um, 
I hope that that helps you. And yeah, again, yeah. this is a powerful year for you to transform and to be you. So thank all you right, very much. All right. Okay. All okay. right. Thank you. Have a great okay. night. Bye-bye. Yeah, so I just want to reiterate, um, you know, Black Moon Lilith, the shadow side, very interesting story for those who want to research it and read it. And um, I try to give tidbits every week. Uh, we do have one last thing I wanted to mention. We do have on the 23rd of thir uh, Thursday, May 23rd, we have a full moon in Sagittarius. So that's something that I'm going to talk about in more depth next week. I think um, full moons are great because they're great to release energies that are, are no longer useful for us, whereas a new moon is a new beginning. And I find that I have played with these moon cycles. I start all my things that I want to do, my business, my relationships, things that I really want to accomplish in my life um, during a new moon and things that I want to release that are no longer necessary in my growth on a full moon. So I'm super excited to continue this journey with Zodiac Zone and please, please, please um, on the, in the Facebook group, if there's anything that any of you want to hear about or anything that um, you're interested in, I always, always take comments and suggestions. And I do personal readings. You know, my website is www.mmastrovibes.com. And thank you all for tuning in tonight. And I'm so excited to be continuing and growing with this show as well.